Welcome to Celebrating God's Grace, a Women World Leaders podcast. It is my honor to bring to you today a reading from Voice of Truth magazine. God has called Women World Leaders to produce this publication throughout each year. We work with artists and writers, authors and helpers to showcase God's glory. Please visit womenworldleaders.com where you can read every edition that has come out since day one. We are certain it will encourage you and empower you to a closer walk with Jesus Christ. Please register for a free digital subscription by going forward. And if you become a monthly contributor of any size donation, we will make certain you receive a beautiful magazine that will be ongoing. It's coffee table quality and sent to your mailbox. Beautiful. We are a 501c3 and all donations are tax deductible. Maybe you'd like to pay it forward and provide the printed copies as gifts to someone who can use the encouragement and the word of God through messages and stories. Whatever way you choose, it is our heart that you will be blessed by hearing and reading Voice of Truth. Today's reading is from our seventh edition of 2022, January. The article is Gospel Grace, and it's written by the author, Anita Setrin. Anita Setrin runs prayer stations, and she's also a leader at Women World Leaders. She's a wife, a mother. She is a beautiful woman of God, and she also has a special needs child. She has been in missions her entire life, and it is our privilege to read to you today, Gospel Grace by Anita Setrin. The title, Is This It? I wonder what I'm going to be when I grow up. Did you ever think or say this when you were young? Or maybe, like me, you have continued to say it year after year through your teens, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and now for me, knocking on 50s door. Jesus has always been the center of my world. At the age of 16, I dedicated my full life to ministry and now served in full-time missions for the last 24 years. I brought up my children in full-time ministry, very similar to how I was raised. I've had the privilege of leading young men and women, training and sending people on outreach missions, and investing in new ministries. I am grateful for the life I've lived, and yet through it all, I've still found myself thinking, I wonder what I'm going to be when I grow up. So I prayed, God, have your way in my life. It's not that I haven't lived a full life. I got married at 20 to my best friend, and we will celebrate our 30th anniversary in September. We have three beautiful children. Our eldest son is now married to a beautiful Christian young lady, and our middle daughter just graduated from college, making the dean's list every semester. And our youngest daughter, Kirsten, is our very special gift that we get to keep forever. Our precious baby girl just turned 18, and she has Down syndrome. In the depths of my heart, I always knew, yet also feared, that I would have a child with special needs. You see, I had three precious uncles who each had special needs and learning disabilities. They were not diagnosed during their childhood, but it was evident that they were different. However, they were special, and they were mine. They loved me unconditionally, and I loved them. I knew that my childhood years of living near them, caring for them and protecting them had prepared me for this divine task of a special needs motherhood. 
Kirsten needed open heart surgery at nine weeks old to prepare a very large hole in her heart. Just days after the surgery, while still in the hospital, she split open her sternum bone due to severe vomiting, requiring a second surgery to open her chest and repair the sternum. In the months to come, her heart healed perfectly. Over the next eight years, however, Kirsten would require seven additional surgeries for her hearing and other needs. It felt like the doctor's appointments, lab works, and hospital visits would just never end. Eventually, however, things settled down and life continued. I wondered, is this it? Is this my calling, my purpose? We prayed, God's will be done. And years later, we marched as a family in Washington, D.C. at the March for Life with a group called Kids Keep Infants with Down Syndrome. It was wonderful and fulfilling. We participated in this event a few consecutive years, and I wondered, is this it? Is this what I've been waiting for? We prayed and trusted God with each open door. In 1992, my father, Nick Savoca, founded a new ministry called Prayer Stations. It is a profoundly simple concept, a red and white banner printed with the words Prayer Station. It's hung above a white table and displayed on a sidewalk so that pedestrians approaching from either directions can, we, can see it. We started this ministry in New York City to provide free prayer to anyone in need. It's disarming. Who doesn't need prayer? After all, prayer and God's faithfulness were the themes of our lives. Immediately following the destruction of the World Trade Center in New York City by terrorists on 9-11-2001, Prayer Stations expanded its ministry to rally Christians from around the country and the world to come and pray for our fellow New Yorkers. We set up as many as 14 prayer stations around the parameter of Ground Zero and had them available six days a week for a full year following the devastating events. As a ministry, we prayed for over 50,000 people in that year alone and saw more than 3,000 individuals give their lives to Christ. Miracles happened on the streets. Prayer really does change things. In the years that followed, we continued to use this amazing tool of prayer stations in New York City, praying for the needs of people and witnessing salvations and other miracles that happened before our own very eyes. In addition, churches and ministries that had served with us through the year following 9-11 began to reach out and ask if they could purchase a prayer station for their own communities. At that point, we began to manufacture prayer stations to send around the country. We also had the banners translated into 12 different languages as requests came in from around the world. As a leader in our ministry, I trained young people and sent them out into the mission field all over the globe. It was beautiful, yet challenging. I was honored to mentor young men and women and see lives transformed. And I wondered, is this it? Is this my life's calling? So I prayed and asked the Lord, is this the thing? Is this what I have been praying for? Then this past summer, 2021, my husband and I almost lost our lives to COVID. People were praying for us all over the world. It's a long and miraculous story, which you can read about by going to our website, www.sparknewlife.com. Through it, God opened more doors for ministry. Only this time, instead of asking my usual question, is this it? I finally began to see how it was all it. I saw how God had woven this beautiful pattern of lessons and experiences into my life. I had been fulfilling my purpose all along. He carried me when I was weak. He opened new doors of opportunities when I least expected it. 
He healed our daughter's heart. He challenged us to trust his faithfulness and step out into a new avenue of ministry. He gave us back our lives. And in turn, we will spend every day to our last breath living for him and doing whatever the next assignment happens to be. We have been living out his purpose every single day. This is what I know. God has a purpose for your life. My favorite scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Bible also says in Jeremiah 1, 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Wow, the God of the universe loves you so much and has a purpose for your life. Whether you have been aware of him throughout your life or have been running from him for as long as you can remember, Deuteronomy 31 6 says, Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Genesis 1, 26 to 27 tells us that God created us in his image and likeness. Webster's Dictionary says that an image is a duplicate of something. And that to be made in the likeness of someone else means you possess many, but not all, the characteristics of that person. Only humans are created in God's image and likeness. We are daughters of the creator of the universe, and we possess his characteristics. He has given us a soul, a spirit, the desire for relationship, free will, reign over the earth, wisdom, knowledge, and the ability to discern between right and wrong. He's given us hearts of love and compassion. It's easy to look around our world today and wonder whether or not these giftings are really given to everyone. The truth is that they are, but unfortunately, people have chosen with their God-given free will to turn from God and his purpose for their life. We have an enemy and his name is Satan. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Our enemy desires to destroy us, to take us off course from God's beautiful purpose for our lives. But don't forget about the end of that verse, which says that he came that we might have life, abundant life. I have good news. It's never too late for you. Whether you are young or have been around for a while, God is a loving and redemptive God. He loves his kids and you are welcome into his family because of the gift of his perfect and precious son, Jesus, who laid down his life as a sacrifice for our sins. We are told in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We only need to accept his love and forgiveness, and he will make us whole and set us on a path of true purpose, one where you will never have to ask again, is this it? Isn't our God awesome? Well, thank you, Anita. We are so grateful that you decided to share this with us in Voice of Truth, and now we can share it on this podcast And if there are any of you listening today that have never prayed that prayer where you specifically have asked Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, we desire to give you that opportunity. 
And we want to come alongside of you and pray with you. In fact, we can pray with you right now. And it just means simply bowing your head where you are. God knows your heart. He hears your heart. So if you say these words and just repeat them after me, it's not my words that are going to save your soul from hell. It is going to be your words and your heart as you pray this to God. I'm just going to lead you in the prayer. So if you'd like to pray this prayer with me, please just bow your head and close your eyes and let's pray together. Dear Lord, I want to know you more intimately, God. I realize that I am a sinner and that there is no way for me to get to you in heaven, God, but to have payment for my sin. And God, you provided the perfect sacrifice. And you said, God, all I have to do is believe in him. And that's Jesus. And so God, right now, I am sharing from my heart that I believe I'm a sinner. I am sorry for my sin. God, I want to turn away from what I'm doing wrong and follow you, Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus came to this earth to die for me personally, to die for my sins. I believe he rose on the third day and completed it. And now, God, I accept this free gift of eternal life from you. And I just say, thank you, Lord. Please come into my heart and be my savior. God, I want to follow you and I trust you. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies, if you prayed that prayer with me and you believe it with all your heart, the Holy Spirit came in and he is working in you and he will never leave you or forsake you. You are not alone. And ladies, we are here at Women World Leaders to come around beside you and just do life with you, encourage you. We have so many ways that you can plug into this ministry. You can get daily devotions. We encourage you to read the word every day. And ladies, we encourage you to step out in faith and just to do something for the Lord. We are so grateful of what he's done in our lives. And all we want to do at Women World Leaders is serve him. We have many useful tools. We have the podcasts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that you can listen to. We also have Voice of Truth magazine, again, which is available to you on our website at womenworldleaders.com. It's in digital, and it is free to anybody who wants to come on the website and check it out. We also have all the past editions as well. So ladies, we are so grateful to have you here today. We want to just again, invite you to be part of Women World Leaders podcast and join us in God's extravagant love and your creative purpose. Please visit our website at womenworldleaders.com. There you can submit a prayer request, read a devotion, or even make a donation in Jesus name. Thank you today for being here with us. Today's podcast is copyrighted and cannot be used without expressed written consent. God bless you all and have a beautiful day.